okay so fine now we need we will talk about this standard model of the particle physics hmm? this is standard model of the particle physics so um, i am this is actually a very vast very broad subject in itself actually there are whole courses on this standard model but i am just giving you a brief review about this particle physics and you should be able to um, should be know about the standard model of the particle physics and there is uh, very few important things which you need to know when when you are <coughs> uh, studying this particle physics so this part standard model of particle physics was actually actually describes all the known particle physics phenomena in terms of the elementary particles i mean to say ke jitne bhi aapke particle physics phenomena hote hain they are all being described in terms of by this standard model so i will uh, write some of these important points here on just one minute okay so this standard model the standard model of particle physics describes the known particle physics phenomena in terms of elementary particles elementary means the fundamental particles and their fundamental interactions and their fundamental interactions fine so this is actually this model was actually proposed to explain all the physics phenomena that is happening in the particle physics in terms of some basic constituents that is what we call as an elementary particles and their fundamental interactions so according to this particular model all the matter is actually built from the small number of fundamental supin hop particles according to this model all the matter is <clears throat> built from a small number of small number of this fundamental fundamental supin hop particles जिनको हम फर्मियॉन्स भी बोलते हैं सुपिन हॉफ पार्टिकल्स फर्मियॉन्स सो आई विल एक्सप्लेन हाउ मेनी पार्टिकल्स आर देयर बट आई विल जस्ट इलॉबरेट इट दिस मॉडल सो दिस द फर्स्ट थिंग इज दिस कि दिस स्टैंडर्ड मॉड्यूल वाज एक्चुअली प्रपोज्ड टू डिस्क्राइब ऑल द पार्टिकल फिजिक्स फिनोमेना बाय सम एलिमेंट्री पार्टिकल्स एंड देयर फंडामेंटल इंटरेक्शंस सो एज पर दिस मॉडल द ऑल द मैटर इज एक्चुअली बिल्ट फ्रॉम द स्मॉल नंबर ऑफ फंडामेंटल पार्टिकल्स दैट इज सुपिन हॉफ पार्टिकल जो भी जो भी मैटर है दैट इज एक्जिस्टिंग इन द यूनिवर्स दैट इज एक्चुअली मेड फ्रॉम ऑल दिस सुपिन फंडामेंटल पार्टिकल्स small number of fundamental how many number of particle part we will just go to explain that in a while so this uh, lecture will be actually a review to your very first unit you have studied about the particle physics okay now you know that this uh, what i mean by the elementary particles the elementary particles are actually understood to be the point like particles this elementary particles are actually point like particles like particles which have no substructure right which have no substructure then they are not actually composed of anything else they have no substructure with no substructure like we have electron with no substructure uh up to the present limits of what 10 to power some minus 18 to 10 to power minus 19 meter yani up to this they don't have any substructure they are truly fundamental theek hai now these elementary particles <clears throat> are actually of two types one what we called as a basic building blocks of matter now these two elementary particles are 
of two types right so there are two types what is first one the first one is that we call as a basic building blocks the basic building blocks theek <clears throat> hai the basic building blocks the basic building blocks of matter what these elementary particles and we known as known as matter particles known as matter particles fine and the second one are the intermediate interaction particles intermediate interaction particles interaction particles now you know that what i mean by the intermediate interaction particles that is that is being mediated by the interaction between the different particles for example when we talk about the atomic force the photon is an intermediate part in this particle between the nucleus and the electrons now <clears throat> we are going to talk about the strong interaction electromagnetic interaction weak interactions so those particles which are responsible which are being mediated by this particles we call them as intermediate interaction particles like we have photon have we have w plus minus boson z0 boson and also we have the like pions are also there in when we talk about the nuclear forces theek okay? hai now i am going to elaborate these two these two types of the elementary particles and from that we will see what actually the standard model <clears throat> actually what in the standard model so let us talk about the one by one now further i want to add one more thing that all the experimental data from the high energy physics experiments can be accounted for by this by this standard model mani jitne bhi experimental this high energy physics mein aapke experimental data liya jata hai so that is actually that is considered to be because of this the standard model of the particle physics and their interactions and one more thing i want i just forget to tell this model was actually proposed in the year 1970 right so in 1970 the part this standard model this standard model of the particle physics actually it was from 1960 to 70 but it is assumed to be it is assumed, this is considered to be the, the, the standard model of the particle physics was actually formulated in the year 1970 hmm? okay so now let us talk about these elementary this uh, these two types of the class of the particles one by one the first one that is what we called as a building blocks building blocks right now i will just divide it into two screen i will write here one and building blocks okay now as i said ki the building blocks are actually the supin half particles the basic building blocks so they are actually the supin half particles jinko hum fermions bhi bolte hain so you know that there are six flavors of quarks you already know that because you already have there are six flavors of quarks and six flavors of leptons right the six flavors of there are six flavor means there are six quarks and six leptons or i can say that the three pairs so in the in the first case in the building blocks we have six flavors of quarks six flavors of quarks and six flavors yeah i can say the three pairs of leptons now supin half particles means the those particles the fermions means those particles which have the supin half you know that the quarks are supin half particles also the leptons electron muon tau electron neutron you know they are all supin half particles so i will just summarize them into this table here one by one see i will write down here the flavor here i am going to write down the flavor now here i am going to write down the symbol of that particular flavor here i am going to write down the mass mass in gev giga electron volt and here the charge electric charge here i will going to write down the charge fine so let's start start with this uh, six three flavors of the leptons so you know that leptons mein aapka kya hai you have electron 
I will just first write down. Electron has a symbol of E minus. Then mass, you know what is the mass of electron in GeV? It's 0 0.511 MeV. Into the MeV. But here I am taking it into the GeV. So I can just multiply it by 5.11 into 10 to the power 4. So this is into, sorry, 10 to the power minus 4 GeV. And the charge, you know, charge of electron is minus 1. Right? Now we have the electron neutrino. Electron neutrino. Now, electron neutrino, the symbol that's like this, and it's very mass is very less. Usually, we are taking it less than 10 to the power 8 GV, and its charge is zero. They are neutral. Then we have muon. Muon <clears throat> symbol is like this mu, and <clears throat> its mass is around 1.0.106. GV. They are least massive. They are very least massive. And again, uh, this uh, the charge is again minus one because it's a lepton. Then we have the muon neutrino. Muon neutrino. Neutrino. Okay. The muon neutrino is like symbol is like this, and its mass is very less than three into ten to the power minus four GV. Okay. Fine. And its again charge is zero. Then we have tau. The tau or tau on the home school. Its symbol is like this, and its mass is around 1.78. It's massive particle as compared to the electron and this. Then we have tau neutrino. Tau neutrino. It's like symbol is like this, tau neutrino, and mass is less than 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power minus 2 G. Again, its charge is minus one, its charge is zero. So these are actually, so the the first, the standard model, as I said, it actually can, consists of the two different kinds of a particle. One is the basic building blocks that we call, the, the, the building blocks are actually divided, are classified as the six flavors of quarks and six flavors of leptons. Now these are the different flavors of the leptons. Now similarly, as I said, we have the six flavors of Quarks. Now the six flavors of quarks can be summarized into a table like this, similar way. Similar way. So what I, you can again uh, form it another table. Six flavors of quarks. You can write here the flavor. Flavor. Then here you can write down the symbol. Then I have the mass in GV again. And then we have the charge, same just quantum numbers charge. So you know that we have up, we have down, we have strange, we have charm, we have top, and then we have bottom. bottom. These are the these are the different cocks which we have already have, right? Okay, now up is simply denoted by the symbol is up, it's D, it's S, it is C, it is T, it is P. They are the symbols. Now, what about the masses? Now, this uh, up quark has a least massive, it's around 0 0.003 GV. Then down is almost the similar mass, but little higher than the uh, this um, up quark, this 0 0.7. Now, strange has a mass of 0 0.1 GV. Charm has a mass of 1.3 GV. The stop is very massive. Its mass is around some 175 GV. Bottom is about 14.3. Now, coming back to the charge, you know the up quark has a charge of 2 by 3, right? This has a minus 1 by 3. Strange again has a minus 1 by 3. Charm has this 2 by 3. This top plus has two. plus 2 by 3. And this bottom minus has one. minus 1 by 3. So you already know from this, from the very first unit. We are actually starting with this kind of the elementary particles. Okay. So actually our aim is to find what actually the st your standard model actually is composed of. What actually, what is actually there in the standard model of the particle? As I said, all the it, it, is, it describes all the phys this particle physics phenomena in terms of all these elementary particles which we are which we are talking about now. Okay. Now if you look at these two tables, now the first two flavors, these two flavors here and these two flavors here. Okay. Yani up down this up down and here electron and electron neutrino they are known as the first generation they are known as a first generation matter first generation matter here is again known as a first generation first generation matter fine okay now what what about this first generation matter this is actually 
they are actually least uh, they are actually most stable least massive and most stable you need to know now this and this here the second the, the third fourth row here third fourth row they are known as the second generation second generation matter second generation matter second generation matter here it is again known as the second generation now similarly the last two rows here the last two rows here this is called as a third generation matter here it's called as a third generation matter okay now this second generation and the third generation they are actually the least stable so what, what least stable means they are unstable okay so they actually lost for a tiny fraction of the second that means they do stable means they do not exist for a long so what what will happen if they do not exist for a long they will change to something else so they just decaying into the first generation so once they are being formed they de soon decay into the first generation any yani this will decay into this electron this electron electron you to know here this top and bottom will decay because of the unstable this this um, lifetime they will just decay to the first generation of quarks okay so this is about the this now i will like to add one more point here i don't know whether you have uh, you have must might have you it's necessary uh, the about the quarks the quarks have an one additional quantum number that is what we called as a color color quantum number yes sir color quantum number they come in different colors so you need to know that the <clears throat> this uh, the quarks jo hain they have an additional quantum number so they so because on the basis of this color they are actually of three types we call them as a red green and <clears throat> blue theek hai now as you know this is an additional information this has nothing to do with the part this standard model fill, um, uh, here but this is an adding addition that this color quantum number jo hain this is actually associated with these quarks so they are actually coming in three different colors now you know that the color is not seen in nature for example if you look the proton and a neutron or some any other particle particle boson or a hadron you cannot see whether this is red this is green this is blue so that's why the experiment the, the hadrons which are being observed experimentally they are colorless they are colorless now further the hadrons jo hain they we actually so actually the hadrons are composed of this quarks right the quarks the hadrons now are of two types one is called as the baryons and the other are called as a mesons right the baryons are the quarks composed of three okay and mesons are the quarks composed of a quark and an anti quark right okay so this was an additional information about the, that this color this quarks jo hain they have an additional quantum number that we know as a color and they came in three different colors red green and blue and oh, in, the thing is that ki jo aapka ye hai uh, the hadrons jo hai aapke they are usually colorless they are colorless the color color has not been seen in the nature theek okay? hai okay so this is one thing okay now let us come back to the second one <clears throat> let us come back to the second one okay the second one what uh, the second class of the particles that we we called as an intermediate particles interaction particles intermediate particles as the names are intermediate they are actually intermediating between the between some other particles okay now the second class of particles as i said are intermediate particles now you already know that there are the there are four fundamental interactions okay there are four fundamental interactions one is called as a strong then there is electromagnetic then is weak then is okay. gravitational and okay. every every interaction has their own the mediating quanta mediating quanta we also came or intermediating particle okay now apart from the gravitational interaction all the relevant interactions that is electromagnetic strong and the weak interactions are actually known to be mediated they are actually mediated by the exchange of because the, i would know maybe in future we might know about the gravitation also the, what is the particle that is being respond for the what is the mediating particle of the gravitational force we call it usually theoretically called that as a graviton but it has not been observed yet experimentally right so now we are going to talk about we are just uh, omitting this gravitation thing and we will talk about the three different interactions now as you know 
so let me again make it a table because it becomes easy to understand it from the table so uh, i will make a table like this i will say here the force or the interaction kon si hai hamari pass then i will say the intermediate particle intermediate particle kon sa hai us force ka intermediate particle then i will say what is the relative strength of that force relative strength then finally i will say the range because different forces have the different ranges huh? okay now let us talk about the very important that is what we call as a strong force and you know though what the strong force the strong force the part the electro this uh, the protons and the neutrons inside the nucleus are held together by the strong force so what is the mediating particle there you know that that is pi plus minus pi ohms but here mm-hmm. when we talk about strong particle in terms of the particles we will talk about the protons the protons are actually composed of quarks and the quarks are actually bound together by the mediating particle we call them as gluon right gluons gluons okay now the relative strength of, of this is 1 and the range is of the order of 10 to the power minus 15 meter because that is the size of the proton or a neutron now similarly i will talk about the second force is about the this electromagnetic the electromagnetic force always happens between the charged particles so when there is a charged particles the electromediating particle that is what we call as a photon okay and its relative strength is 10 to the power minus 3 and the range is infinite it can go up to an infinite range fine then we have the weak interaction now the weak interaction the the mediating particle jo hai actually there are three different particles one is called the w plus minus boson and z zero boson we are going to discuss about this weak interaction in a detail in the next unit okay the next unit is all about the weak interactions so the mediating particle here is w plus minus and z zero boson and the strength is very weak it's of the that's why we call this as a weak force 10 to the power minus 15 and the range is of the order of 10 to the power minus 17 theek hai this weak force is actually responsible for the beta decay and all that okay then finally gravitational it has no use here but uh, still we need to write it gravitational and as i said ki the mediating particle is what we call as a graviton okay the graviton not found this, this is just a theoretical prediction that this is a graviton which is responsible for the mediation between this uh, the force and the range is again very this uh, strength is very uh, low it's of the order of 10, 6 into 10 to the power minus 39 the range is infinite okay the range is infinite okay uh, this is just a review to what you already know about these particles and intermediate protons okay now let us come back to one by one the gluons actually the gluons are are massless gluons are massless gluons are massless neutral yani electrically neutral electrically neutral and they also carry and carry this color quantum number color yes sir they co- co- carry the color quantum number right now uh, there are actually eight gluons since they came in eight different colors theek hai there are eight gluons eight gluons are there and they came in eight different colors theek hai now what is the consequence of this um, of the gluon being colorful is that they interact not only with the quarks but they also interact with the itself matlab a gluon can interact we have seen in the last uh, lecture when we talk about the uh, this quark gluon plasma the gluon can interact with a gluon a gluon so that it will just emit some other particles so the, the consequence of the gluons being colorful is that the, the there is a the, there is a color quantum number so is that that it doesn't only interact with the quarks but it also interacts with the It, it also interacts with themselves and a gluon can interact with a gluon and it, when there are when there are eight gluons with eight different colors so that means the one of gluon with with one color can interact with a gluon with a, the another color now this is about the gluons coming back to the second one photon as i said photon is actually massless photon you know is massless massless chargeless yes and it's not interacting non self interacting 
non self interacting not interacting with interact the range okay now the weak bosons we call them as a bosons the weak bosons weak bosons that is w plus minus and z zero they are massive actually as compared to the other this they are massive and self interacting massive and Self interacting. interacting, right? So W plus minus has a charge of plus Sorry. minus one, and W plus has a charge of plus one. W minus has a charge of minus one, and Z zero is neutral. So they have all; the, they are neutral. They are charged, charged as well. Okay. Now we are not bothered about the gluon because this gravit this graviton we, because that is not our concern. It's not usually in this. model okay so what i now said ki the standard model as i said it actually contains the six flavors of uh, leptons six flavors of quarks and it also contains this intermediate particles now in intermediate particles it will contain these particles okay now in addition to all these particles there is one more particle which was proposed at that time theek hai That at that time it was a hypothetical particle. Later on, it was found. I am going to tell you something about this, but at the end of the lecture. But still, hal uh, this. Uh, so, in addition to all these particles, the another particle is there. That the particle what we call as an uh, Higgs boson. Up the name suna hoga. That is what we call as a Higgs boson. Higgs boson. God particle. Yes, it was uh, God. It's known as God's particle, and you might have. If you remember, it the year nineteen. This two hundred twenty twelve. Two thousand twelve. Me, a news came. Thi God's father. One place. Pe khar. Koi. Keh raha tha ki God's particle. Kya hai? Ka. Kya hai? Ye. Now you just imagine the Higgs boson was proposed in the year nineteen hundred and seventy by and this Peter Higgs. Peter Higgs. ठीक है. मैं से मिल चुका हूं बाय द वे सो आई वाज आई मेट हिम इन इटली आई वाज देयर इन द कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड ही वाज आल्सो देयर इट वाज अ कॉन्फ्रेंस इन द हाई एनर्जी फिजिक्स पीटर हिक्स सो ही प्रपोज दैट इन द ईयर 1970 एंड इन द 2012 इट वाज एक्चुअली डिस्कवर्ड एट द सर्न एलएससी आई विल से द एलएससी एटलस एंड सीएमएस एक्सपेरिमेंट एटलस एंड CMS experiment. कैसे ये डिटेक्ट हुआ और इट्स ए लॉन्ग स्टोरी आई विल जस्ट फिलहाल मैं यहाँ पे ये कंक्लूड करूंगा आई कैन जल टेल यू सम मोर थिंग्स अबाउट दिक्स बोजन बट फिलहाल सो आई वेट इन एडिशन टू ऑल दिस पार्टिकुलर दिस लैपटॉन्स Quarks and this the intermediate bosons. There is an another particle that we what we what they propose that it actually contains one of the particle. It was at that time it was considered to be the hypothetical particle. यानी खाली hypothetical particle or particle as it was why higgs boson because it was given by this peter higgs peter higgs that's why they called this as a higgs boson theek okay? hai so this higgs boson was proposed that in, it can the, that it the interaction with the higgs boson can cause the particles to have masses yani for example if i have some particle if it interact with the higgs boson it will acquire a mass ठीक है, I will again tell you these things how it acquires the masses once it interacts with the this hypothetical particle. It's actually the Higgs field, but that is a different topic. I will just try to focus on this particular part. फिलहाल यहाँ पे हैं. So the Higgs boson was proposed that it also contains the Higgs boson. Now the Higgs boson itself is predicted to be 190 times massive than a proton. So you know that the mass of proton is around 1 GeV, approximately 1 GeV. It is 939, but we are taking it a 1 GeV. So the it is 190 times Was the mass of GeV, so that means 190 GeV mass of this. So you can imagine how ma massive this Higgs boson is. So okay, so now the standard particle model of the particle physics actually contains all these particles. So you can just summarize that the standard model of particle physics actually contains the 17 particles. 17 particles. Okay, one of the 17 particles is this Higgs boson. And what are the remaining sixteen uh, are there? Now, out of the sixteen, uh, out of the remaining sixteen, the twelve are quarks and the leptons, that is building blocks, and the four are the intermediate vector bosons. So, how I am going to make it like this? The standard model, which you have got here. So, let me make a table. What actually the standard model, which you have got here, how it looks like? See. Okay. 
quickly. So uh, I will write here the fermions. Fermions. So when you, if you search the standard model, you will see this image. You will see this table everywhere. Fermions. Here I am going to write the bosons. Now fermions. Me, what is your? I will just make the table like this. One block. Second block. Third block. Right. यहाँ पे आपका है एक ब्लॉक, दें सेकंड ब्लॉक, दें थर्ड ब्लॉक, ओके। नाउ हियर, आई एम गोइंग टू डिवाइड इट लाइक दिस। आई विल सी दैट दिस इज अप डाउन, जो कॉर्क्स हैं। यहाँ पे मैं सिक्स कॉर्क्स लिखूँगा, स्ट्रेंज, चारम, टॉप, बॉटम, राइट? यहाँ पे जो हैं इसमें, दिस आर सिक्स कॉर्क्स। Electron neutrino, muon, muon neutrino, tau, and tau neutrino, right? Tau neutrino. Now, okay. Okay, now these are fermions. That's why I write here for me. They are all fermions, sipion hop particles. These are sipion hop particles, sipion hop particles. Now we have the bosons. Bosons are actually the particles with sipion one, right? We call them as a boson. Now, one, two, three, four. Now, bosons, you have the photon with sipion one. You have Z0. You have W plus minus. We usually have W and we have the gluons. So they are the Bosons. How many particles so they can shoot? Uh, 6, 12, and 16. And I said it will contain, it contains the one more particle, Higgs boson. So I will put this Higgs boson here. Higgs boson or Higgs particle. Right? So Higgs. Now one more thing. They, I can just write down them as a, they are quarks. They are here leptons. And they are force carriers. Force carriers. Okay? So this is your, what I said, this is the standard model. So jitani bhi aapki physics, this particle physics hai, that is actually formulated because of all this, jo mene kaha tha, ke jitani bhi high energy experimental data hai, they can be accounted for by this model, by this standard model. So you cannot go beyond this model, matter particles. Now there are anti-matter particles again. So as I was saying, this is just a brief review about the standard model. So when uh, standard, if, when it comes to your mind, so you should be able to know that we are actually describing all the particle physics phenomena in terms of the model. And it contains actually the basic building blocks of model. And then there are, there are some <clears throat> other particles, which we call as a bosons, yeah, force carriers. So we put them like this. Corks means the corks are associated with this. Leptons, fermions, they are all fermions. This is a boson and these are the force carriers. Now here you can write down the Higgs boson. Okay. Isn't it easy? Yes, <clears throat> just, yes, I just try to make it very simple. Otherwise, if you'll go through the physics of that um, standard model, what are the, how actually they propose it, they are actually considering this electroweak force into the computation and so many other things. It's very complicated. It's not that easy. I just try to explain you to, just to, to have the big winter. As if this is not the part of the syllabus also. This is not mentioned anywhere in your syllabus. But it should be there at least to have some brief review because you, one who is training the particle physics at least to know something about this standard model, right? That's why I decided to um, tell you something about this standard model. Okay, quickly, I will just tell you something about this Higgs boson. As I was saying, it was predicted by this predictor Higgs in the, in the year in some 1970s. And later on, it was found in the year this now this what is this higgs boson this higgs boson as i said it's a very massive particle so actually the people at that time predicted that this is present everywhere higgs the the higgs boson is present everywhere so actually it's higgs field and the particles actually acquire the masses for example why the up cork has why the up cork has so much of mass why the down cork has that much of mass why the it is because of the interaction of all these particles the electron Depending on how do they interact with all these this Higgs field, for example, if this is some Higgs field, that depending upon the interaction, magnitude of the interaction, they will interact with this Higgs field, they acquire.
acquire for if it in agar it fast move ho raha hai then it will acquire less mass agar it if it interacts with the six field it will acquire greater mass down similarly so that particles jitne bhi aapke elementary particles hain they are acquire the masses now what is it assume it is assume that at the time of big bang all the particles elementary particles jo aapke hain chahe quark hai muon hai electron hai now jitne bhi fundamental particles hain they were all having the zero masses now with the passage of time they acquire the masses how do they acquire the masses they acquire the masses by interacting with this higgs field so they depending upon how much kis kis particle ne kitna uske sath interact kiya usne utna mass acquire kiya hai so it is assumed that this higgs boson is present everywhere and the particles all other particles are actually acquiring the masses by the interaction with this model and also as i said it was um, discovered in the year 1912 at atlas and the cms in the interaction of a this um, two this uh, na proton two have proton beams were collided in the center of mass frame so the protons uh, then some of the some of the residues wahan se jo produce hua hai so that actually provides a signal as like we were discussing about the signature of the colloquial person so from that signal they say that yes the particle phys- the higgs boson was present there actually they are talking about the higgs field the, but this is a quantum of the part, quantum particle that is actually responsible for this which is responsible for this um, the quantum this higgs field the quantum of the particle so discovered that particle that we called as a higgs boson right